This is a second stimulus check update. In this video, we'll talk about how President Trump wants to send stimulus checks on his own without the approval of Congress, how Mark Meadows said this morning he's optimistic about a stimulus package happening, and then he also gives a timeline of when he expects a stimulus package to happen. Mitch McConnell said that they're going to vote on the Republican skinny stimulus bill this week. I hope you had a great Labor Day weekend and you're having a wonderful day so far. As usual, I want to keep it real with you. We are not anywhere near close to getting a second stimulus check, nothing voted on, nothing confirmed. If you appreciate me giving you that information up front, please hit the like button down below. Let's get into it. We got a lot of news to cover. So to recap, President Trump said the other day, now we have $300, $300 billion in an account that we didn't use, and we are willing to use that. I would be willing to release it subject to Congress and use that as stimulus money, and it would go right to the American people. Then he also says, I'd like to use it without their permission, referring to Congress, but I guess I'm not allowed to do that. I did ask the question. So Congress has to just say, use it. All they have to say is use it. $300 billion goes immediately into our system and will really help the American people. So President Trump is saying that all Congress has to do is just say, use it. And then he's able to send out stimulus checks on his own. Now, $300 billion, if you were wondering what that equals, um, on the right here is the Republican stimulus proposal. So $300 billion would give Americans a $1,200 stimulus check, just as the first round with the CARES Act. Also, President Trump is referring to $300 billion in an account. According to Fox Business, it's actually not $300 billion. So there was $454 billion intended to cover losses on the Federal Reserve lending programs. And out of that, there is $259 billion that remains uncommitted. And supposedly those are the funds that President Trump is talking about. So it's $41 billion short of $300 billion, but maybe President Trump has an extra $40 billion somewhere else that he could use for stimulus checks. So I'm really curious what you think about this. If you were not voting for President Trump in this upcoming election, would him sending out stimulus checks on his own, with, would this sway your decision to vote for President Trump? Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Also, yesterday at the Labor Day news conference, President Trump is saying that the Democrats don't want a stimulus deal because it'll help them out during the election. So more specifically, he was saying that they think it's good for politics if they don't make a deal, referring to the Democrats not wanting to make a stimulus deal. Then he says they don't want to make a deal because they know that's good for the economy. And if they make a deal that's good for the economy and therefore it's good for me for the election in November, November 3rd, and therefore they're not going to make a deal. So President Trump is saying that Democrats do not want to make a deal because it'll help out the economy and help out President Trump in his election coming up. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. All right, so Mark Meadows this morning said that he predicts that Congress will pass the coronavirus stimulus package before the election. We're in the beginning of September, election is two months away, which is a pretty far timeline, but when asked on Fox Business whether he believed voters would see another stimulus deal before election, Mark Meadows said, I do, I'm not sure, obviously, but I do believe we'll see that only because I've had a number of conversations, probably a dozen sometimes a day with different different rank and file members. When you listen to them, they're listening to their constituents. He then said, I'm more optimistic today than I have been in a long time. So Mark Meadows, which was one of the four negotiators for the stimulus package, out of the four negotiators, he was probably the one who was the most honest and kept it real and didn't sugarcoat things, wasn't as diplomatic. So for him to say that he is optimistic, I think that's a great sign because in the past he he would often say that he was not optimistic or nothing was getting accomplished. So I think this is a good sign for him saying that he is optimistic. Also, the Senate just got back this week. So Senate Republicans are supposed to vote on their skinny stimulus bill. Um, Mitch McConnell is saying that they're gonna vote on it this week. And if you weren't familiar with what is in the skinny stimulus proposal, it's enhanced unemployment benefits, school funding, small business loans, which is the PPP, and coronavirus testing and vaccines. It's around $500 billion. And supposedly there is no second stimulus checks in that. 
Mitch McConnell said, working families must not suffer more than necessary because Democratic leaders think citizens' pain may help their political fortunes. Congress can, should, and must do more help. The Senate will vote and the American people will be watching. Then he said, there's more we agree upon than what we disagree upon. I think it's time we put politics aside, pass the stimulus, actually allow it to go to the president's desk. Now, I find this really interesting because we had an entire month that the Senate was on a taxpayer funded vacation that they could have done work, they could have passed their skinny stimulus proposal weeks ago if they just decided to get off a of vacation into office and do some work, but they didn't, they're waiting until now. And Mitch McConnell is saying that, you know, this is gonna benefit working families, but yet it does not have stimulus checks in it. It does have the unemployment benefits, but not stimulus checks. So I'm really curious how the American people will handle this skinny stimulus proposal, considering it doesn't have any stimulus checks. Mitch McConnell also said, everything Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer have done suggests one simple motivation. They do not want American families to see any more bipartisan aid before the polls close on President Trump's reelection. They have taken Americans' host, uh, health, jobs and schools hostage for perceived partisan gain. Very strong words coming from someone in Congress who didn't really do anything before their vacation, the one month vacation, didn't really do anything during the one month vacation, and Congress having their taxpayer funded vacation, they may not even do anything after their vacation. So we'll see if Congress is gonna take any action while Americans are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis, waiting for this stimulus check, waiting for unemployment, waiting for all of these benefits that were promised to them, but yet Congress has been out on vacation while Americans are struggling. I think they should really just stop vacationing and get something done for the American people. Up until this point, if you appreciate the time and energy that went into making this video, please hit the like button down below. Also, if you want more fast-paced, fact-based style videos, subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button below. All right, so moving on for the CDC eviction moratoriums that is going into effect up until the end of 2020. Now, landlords are trying to seek help from the government because they don't have enough money to pay for their mortgages. So basically around 30 million renters are protected by this eviction moratorium, which means they don't have to pay rent until the end of the year and probably didn't pay rent for the past three, four months. And the landlords are the ones that are paying those mortgages and any other expenses with the house. And now they're saying that if the landlords can't afford to pay their mortgage, then the house is gonna be foreclosed and the renters are gonna be kicked out anyway if the house is foreclosed. Also, landlords are trying to seek legal action against this eviction moratorium to see if they could stop it somehow uh, because you know they're, they're kind of stuck with the bill. Moving on to the unemployment loss wage assistance, that three to $400 unemployment boost. The most recent state to just be approved was Kansas as of yesterday. And according to FEMA, it seems like there's around three weeks of funding left in terms of FEMA because this is a first come first serve basis in terms of getting access to this unemployment boost. Whichever states use up the money first, the states that finally get their system later on, it could be weeks later, they may not have enough money to even pay anyone else because the reason why is any state that is gonna get their unemployment boost system up and going now, they have to pay a retroactive check starting August 1st. So if they were to start now, we're in the second week of September, that could be a $1,200 to $1,600 paycheck that they give first before they give out that $300 weekly boost. So what FEMA's saying and other e economists are saying is that they may just give out a one-time unemployment check with retroactive, so it could be $1,200, $1,600 depending on the state, and then after that there may not be any weekly unemployment boost unless Congress passes a stimulus package that extends the unemployment benefits. Moving on to coronavirus news, so it looks like the cases have been under 50,000. Yesterday was 46,000, and in terms of vaccines, it seems like the FDA is going to uh, maybe possibly approve a vaccine from the US a little earlier. 
Um, so President Trump is saying that he wants the vaccine to happen before the election, which is November 3rd. And Dr. Stephen Han, which is the head of the FDA, is saying that he would not approve a vaccine until it has been shown to be safe and effective. But he has also said there might be an intermediate endpoint short of the completion of the 30,000 person trial that could meet his standards, that could make it pass because it's an emergency and they could pass the approval of the vaccine earlier than the phase three trials ending. I'm just curious, let me know down in the comments below, if the FDA doesn't complete the phase three trials on a vaccine study, but yet approves it to go out to the American population, would you be willing to take that vaccine if it did not approve, or if it did not pass the phase three trials? I'm curious what you think down in the comments below. Speaking of vaccines going out to the civilian circulation, the first batch of Russia's vaccine has been produced and is going into civilian circulation this week to its Russian population. So if you weren't aware, Russian vaccine, it did not pass or even start any of the phase three trials. Phase three trials are when they do a lot of studies to see if there's any side effects to the vaccine and if it will cause any other illnesses in someone when they take this vaccine. They completely skip that all together and they're about to test it out on their people to see how they react. I hope this vaccine doesn't make its way to the United States. That's all the news I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. If you want to support the channel, free way to do so, hit the like button down below. Also comment how I could better serve you on this channel, make these better videos better for you. If you want to learn how to buy those stocks for a dollar, five dollars, you could do something called fractional shares. I talk about it in this video over here. I go over how to, in the Robinhood app, use fractional shares so you could buy any stock you want for your own budget. You could click this video now, it's on my other channel, Why Sense. Or if you want more second stimulus check updates, you could click this playlist down over here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe, thank you for watching.